Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Ohio Association of College Admission Counseling Virtual College Fair. I'd like to thank you for joining us here today. A few housekeeping items before we get started. There is a Q&A feature at the bottom of your screen, which you can use to type two questions to our presenters at any time during the session. If you do have a question for a specific college, please be sure to mention that college within your question. Your camera and microphone are turned off so the panelists cannot see or hear you. This is also just one of many different sessions happening, so be sure to sign up for additional sessions for the next hour as well. And this presentation is also being recorded and will be available within a week at the same site where you registered. Now I'll turn it over to our first college for this session, which is Florida Southern. Awesome, thank you so much. So let me get my screen shared. And if you do not see our logo, just let me know. Um, but to get started, my name is Leanne Williams. I'm one of the admissions counselors at Florida Southern College. I work specifically with applicants from Ohio, so I would be your point of contact. To get started with some basic information, Florida Southern College is located right in between Tampa and Orlando in Lakeland, Florida. We were founded in 1883, which makes us one of the oldest private colleges in the state of Florida, and we are home to about 3,000 total students, 60% who are from the state of Florida and 40% who are from out of state, representing nearly all 50 states and 50 international countries as well. Here at Florida Southern, we have 70 different programs of study as well as 16 pre-professional tracks across our five schools. Our most popular majors are biology or marine biology, business, nursing, and theater. We are a liberal arts college at our core, so you are going to get a well-rounded degree no matter what you major in. Regardless of your major, we emphasize engaged and experiential learning, which basically means that we believe in the power of learning by doing and immersing our students in their field as soon as possible. We're able to offer this engaged learning experience in part because of our small class size. The average class size is about 18 students and our student to faculty ratio is 14 to 1. And all of our classes are taught by the professors themselves to ensure that you're learning directly from the experts in your field at all times. As an extension of our engaged learning experience, we offer students these three guarantees, study abroad, participating in an internship, and graduating on time. The first guarantee I'd like to highlight is that study abroad. There are several different options for studying abroad, but our most popular option is our junior journey program. The junior journey is a seven to 10 day trip over school breaks in either your junior or senior year. Students are receiving course credit for these trips, but the best part about the trips is that they are at little to no additional cost to students. We offer both domestic and international options and you can go on any trip um, that you're most interested in. You don't have to go on the one that's affiliated your, with your major since they don't take time away from your classes. We also guarantee internships to all of our students regardless of major. This is super important because 95% of employers are looking for new hires with experience and completing an internship is a great way to get those kinds of experiences. Students have the option to do internships locally during the school year or closer to home for internships over school breaks. And then the last guarantee is to graduate in four years or less. We're able to guarantee this because in addition to everything I've already shared, professors double as academic advisors and students are meeting with their advisors several times per year to make sure they're staying on track for graduation. We're also very transfer credit friendly, so you may be able to come into college with some college credits already under your belt. To kind of summarize everything that I've shared so far, these academic opportunities are important because they translate into post-graduation success. In fact, 97% of our graduates report achieving their post-graduation goals within one year of graduating from FSC. About a third of our students are going on to graduate or professional programs, and the remaining two thirds are entering the workforce. Outside of academic outcomes, FSC prides itself on being a true campus community. Students are required to live on campus all four years and our 16 housing options include on-campus dorms as well as apartment complexes near campus that are set aside for our upperclassmen. There are also tons of ways to get involved, connect with classmates, and show school spirit. We have 20 NCAA Division II athletic teams and several opportunities to participate in sports at the club and intramural level as well. We also have over 100 different student clubs and organizations ranging anywhere from Greek life and campus ministries to special interest groups and organizations such as our FSC Cat Enthusiast Club. 
So now that we've shared all about FSC, I'm going to transition into the application process. First and foremost, it's 100% totally free to apply regardless of how you do so. Our application is available on our website as well as the Common App and Coalition App. In addition to the application, we are also going to ask for a high school transcript and a personal statement. We are test optional, um, but students are welcome to submit your test scores if you have them. Once we receive all of your application materials, you will get a decision from us within three to six weeks. And then finally, we understand that the cost of college can be overwhelming, so every application is automatically considered for an academic-based scholarship. Some departments on campus also offer specific scholarships based on audition, portfolio review, interview, or athletic recruitment. We also accept any aid you're going to receive from the federal government by filing the FAFSA, as well as outside scholarships or college savings plans. This means that you can earn financial aid from a variety of sources. Um, I will drop in the chat the link to our website, but any questions you have about Florida Southern, feel free to reach out to us. Uh, thank you so much for your attention today. Thank you so much for your presentation. Up next, we have Ohio Dominican University. Hi, everybody. My name is Alicia Dennis, and I am the Director of Undergraduate Admission for Ohio Dominican, and I'm going to share my screen. All right. So Ohio Dominican is the only Catholic university in central Ohio. We were founded in 1911 by the um, Dominican Sisters of Peace, um, and they still play a very large part in our campus community. Each year, we pick a theme that our core um, seminar series kind of focuses on, um, and they rotate through the four Dominican pillars of education. And this year, it is all about what does it mean to be human? So this is kind of the overarching theme of the academic year. Um, so you'll kind of pull that Catholic educational tradition through all of our classes. ODU has about 1,500 students in total, and some really fun things for us. We have 29 countries represented on campus, and then our first year class right now has a 44% diversity rate, um, which is something that we are extremely proud of. 100% of our students do receive some sort of financial aid, and for our first year class, our average GPA was a 3.4 this past year. We have roughly 39 undergraduate majors um, with many different programs and options available for students. Um, we also have our nine graduate programs. And something that we are extremely, extremely proud of is our job and grad school placement rate, um, which is 91%. A lot of that has to do with the small classroom sizes. Um, so you can see our average class size is 13. Um, and then the opportunity for our students to take advantage of our location in Columbus um, with internships and field experiences and clinical hours. A little bit about kind of the application process. Um, one thing that we always recommend is for students to visit campus. So we are a small campus, so we have actually been hosting in-person visits since last summer. Um, they are a little bit limited, uh, but you can definitely visit our website and schedule an individual visit with a tour with one of our student ambassadors and then a meeting with your admission counselor, possibly even talking with a faculty member or sitting in on a class. Our application is free and our application for juniors will open on April 15th and seniors, we are enrolling admission, so you can apply at any time through August of your senior year. We are a test optional school, um, so we can accept either your ACT or SAT score, or if you don't wanna submit those, um, we do offer test optional as well. If you decide to go test optional, we will just need two additional items for your application. So you would still complete the free application, submit your transcripts and either your test score or those test optional documents. And then within about two weeks, you should have your admission packet in hand 
that also has your merit scholarship information. If you're not sure which route to go, test optional or traditional admission, that's okay. That is what the admission counselors are here for. So we can talk with you through what is the best option for you. And then when you decide if you go test optional, we just need a letter of recommendation from a teacher who can speak to your academic abilities in the classroom and then a college essay. Our test optional students are eligible for the exact same merit scholarship as our traditional admission students as well. And those merit scholarships range from 13,000 up to 19,000 per year. And this is truly just based on that admission file. We do have some full tuition scholarships available, um, and that is for our honors program, which does require a separate application. All of our scholarships are renewable for four years of undergraduate study, as long as the student maintains their academic eligibility. So here are some of the more specialized programs that we offer. With our graduate programs, we do offer four plus one bachelor to master's in our MBA, our sport management, and our master of, master's of arts in English. We have an early assurance program with our physician's assistant studies and also a partnership with OUHCOM's um, doctorate of osteopathic medicine. And we have also partnered with the University of Dayton to offer engineering and law accelerated degrees. And lastly, a little bit about um, Ohio Dominican before I wrap up is we are also the only NCAA Division II um, university in Central Ohio as well. So we offer 16 different men's and women's athletic teams. Um, and there is that opportunity for some athletic scholarship as well as those merit scholarships. All right. And if you have any questions, let us know in the chat. Thank you so much for your presentation. Like they mentioned, if you do have questions, please feel free to use that Q&A. We are happy to answer any questions you may have, whether it's a general question to everyone, or if you have a question for a specific institution on this session. Up next, we have Otterbein University. Perfect. Thank you so much as I get my screen shared here. All right. Awesome. Hi, everyone. My name is Andrew Buecher, and I am an admissions counselor here at Otterbein University. Otterbein is located just outside of Columbus, Ohio, in the central Ohio area. We are a liberal arts private university. Um, our enrollment is around 3,000 students, and that spreads among our undergraduate and our graduate population as well. So I'm sure an important part of all of your college searches is that academic piece. And here at Otterbein, we're super proud that we can offer more than 70 majors and 40 minors here on campus. Um, we have some pretty unique and specialized programs. Our largest program is our nursing program, which boasts a 100% NCLEX pass rate. Um, we also have a really cool zoo and conservation science major, which is one of five offered in the nation. And we have a very strong equine science program, along with the super competitive musical theater program as well. In this red box here, you could see our student to faculty ratio of 13 to 1 and those average class sizes of 18 to 20, which really promotes for a personalized educational experience here. Another important piece to your college search, I'm sure, is that location piece. And we are super proud that being so close to Columbus, a 15 to 20 minute drive away, it has, we can offer that small school experience here on campus, but also have all the opportunities that a big city can offer. Believe it or not, Columbus is the 14th largest city in the US, and there's just so many different opportunities to get involved, whether that's the Ohio Theater downtown. Um, I was a college athlete in my undergrad experience, so I love the professional sports teams here in Columbus between the Columbus Crew, the Columbus Blue Jackets, and the Columbus Clippers baseball team as well. And there's so many different opportunities for festivals and shopping nearby campus as well. And as cool as those opportunities are, I really think the biggest draw to our proximity to Columbus is the opportunities for internships and those experiential learning opportunities with so many different businesses headquarters, 
so many research facilities and education and schools network in the suburbs and located in downtown Columbus as well. Zooming in a little bit more to Westerville, specifically Westerville, Ohio is where Otterbein is located and Westerville is a very safe community. And because it's such a safe community, it makes for a very walkable community as well. We have Uptown Westerville that's located just one or two blocks away from campus. And it's really cool for our students to, who maybe don't have a car on campus can be able to walk to things and take advantage of them. Um, Uptown has different eateries, um, some breweries, different shops located uptown. So it's a great way for our students to stay active in the community. Zooming in just a little bit more to our Cardinal community specifically, this bulleted list in the center here are just a couple different examples of student organizations that we have to offer. But believe it or not, Audubon offers over 100 different student organizations. We have NCAA Division III Athletics. We have a very booming Greek-like system here on campus and just a bunch of other ways to get involved as well. Just to touch on our, or our application process a little bit, we do accept our applications through the Common App. On that Common App, we do require that personal essay of a minimum of 250 words, and we do require an official copy of your high school transcripts to be sent to us. Um, like the previous two schools, we are having a test optional ACT SAT reading approach to our applications. And we also, those letter recommendations are optional to Otterbein, but we really, really do encourage them because they do add a lot of value to your application. Just a couple important dates and deadlines to make you all aware of. Um, specifically, these dates will probably look differently when you're getting ready to apply. But if you can take away one thing from this slide, I would love it to be the scholarship priority deadline that we have. So when you're applying, we are enrolling in mission, which means that we accept our applications at any time. But we do have the scholarship priority deadline to be aware of. As long as you apply before the scholarship priority deadline, you will be fully qualified for our full array of scholarships. And then just to touch on our tuition a little bit, I think a lot of the schools in this room are smaller private universities. So I'm sure in your college search, if those are the types of schools you're looking at, there is some tuition stickers to shop with that. But I'm here to tell you, especially at Otterbein, that you are not going to pay this $43,658 amount that you see on the screen here. And we believe in an ideal called tuition transparency. And we are very upfront and honest with not only your first year, what you'll be paying in tuition, but what tuition will look like over your four years here at Otterbein. And these are a couple of different ways that we like to keep our tuition affordable. We have 99% of our first year students receive some form of merit and or need-based aid. And a few others, we have a couple of urban district scholarship opportunities and also this really cool opportunity scholarship for Ohio residents whose families um, are Pell eligible. And then just to finish here, I wanted to finish with a couple of our important values that we have here at Otterbein. And those would be diversity, equality, lifelong learning, opportunity, service, and sustainability. So that is all for me. Thanks everyone for hopping on this evening. Thank you so much for giving us that presentation. Up next, we have Wittenberg University. Hi, everybody. I am not Rachel Ritter. I am covering for her. My name is Ian O'Donnell, so I apologize for having the wrong name up there. But um, my name is Ian O'Donnell. I'm Assistant Director of Admission here at Wittenberg University. Um, I'm going to share my, my screen real quick, so bear with me. Okay. Hopefully everyone can see that. Give me just a second. Okay, so Wittenberg University is a Lutheran um, private college university located in Springfield, Ohio. Um, and our slideshow is titled All About You because a personalized approach to education is what Wittenberg is all about. So you can see here our full range of majors and minors. Um, we like to say that Wittenberg might have, you might have a major, but you're also getting your Wittenberg um, degree as well. We value the courses that are in our core curriculum very deeply. And so we'd like to say, 
whatever major you're in, you are also with um, student first. So um, we are really committed to making sure that you have small class sizes. And part of that is our small student to factor ratio, 13 to one student to factor ratio, um, <clears throat> and as well as a small average class size, which ranges probably similar to the other institutions that have been uh, spoke today of about 15 students um, per class. We, besides our majors and minors, we do offer pre-professional tracks listed over there in that red bubble. We offer pre-chiropractor, dentistry, engineering, health, law, medicine, occupational therapy, optometry, pharmacy, physical therapy, theology, and veterinary. So you can go to Wittenberg for your undergrad or do a couple years and transfer into another undergraduate program for those pre-professional tracks. Wittenberg, we don't have it on this slide, but we do also offer three graduate programs, um, master's in education, a master's in coaching, and then a master's in business analytics. And so you can go into those programs at a discounted rate if you are a Wittenberg alum. <clears throat> Sorry. Wittenberg has 25 intercollegiate NCAA Division III teams. Um, we have a big commitment to the student athletes, so we want to make sure that you are the best on the field, um, on the court, as well as in the classroom. Um, and so we are very proud of our athletic tradition. It's something that we consider an important part of our academic experience here at Wittenberg as well. Um, and of course, in the bottom kind of right hand corner there, you can see our tireless mascot Esri, Esri the Tiger, um, who is a classic Wittenberg mascot and one of Witt's great traditions. <clears throat> So what does active citizenship mean to us? So this is a big part of what makes Wittenberg different. And a big part of what makes Wittenberg different is our commitment um, to civic engagement and to service. Um, and so what that means is that means that we require our students in the curriculum to do 27 hours of community service. But on top of that, we're not just like saying, oh, go and do some community service. We are making sure that our students are being tied to our local community here in Springfield. Um, Witt, it, Springfield is a small city and Wittenberg is intrinsically part of that city. So we want to keep building that relationship. We have two centers that are designed to help with that. One is the McLean Center for Diversity and Inclusion. Another is the Hagen Center for Urban and Civic Engagement. So I like to say that we talk the talk, but we also walk the walk. And we want to make sure that our students are engaged, not just um, in their classroom spaces, but also in our community and also eventually in the world. We have great study abroad opportunities. Um, Witt in South Africa, Witt in Wittenberg, Germany, Witt in Costa Rica, um, and also our Witten DC and um, Bahamas experiences are available as well. So, of course, we're a liberal arts school. You can't have um, real great education without the arts as well. We have a vibrant acapella um, scene here at Wittenberg, a vibrant visual arts and theater arts program as well. So we're really proud of that. Um, our music ensembles are excellent, and we have a full music major at Wittenberg, too. So Wittenberg, of course, has many, many student organizations. Um, we have close to over 100 or over 100, but we just want to highlight a few of them on this page, including our Greek organizations, our faith-based organizations, identity groups, our Concerned Black Students group has been doing a lot of excellent work recently, so we're quite um, proud of them, what they're doing for Black History Month as well. And I love this picture because this is the heart of Wits campus. So Wits campus is absolutely beautiful. Um, we have on total of about 1500 students total. 90% of our student body population lives on campus. So we're very residential, either on campus in our residence halls for your first two years, or in our what we call the Witten Burbs, which are um, houses and apartments that surround campus that we own. This green space in the heart of campus is called the Hollow, um, and it is just kind of the heart of campus. That's where we have our sledding during the winter. It's where we do lots of festivals during warmer months. So being kind of an all of campus surrounds the Hollow. So it's something we're really proud of as well. And so we are really proud, of course, of how our students do. So we have a 97% um, grad school job placement rating. Um, so our students, sorry, I apologize. 97% of our students are either employed or in graduate school um, upon gradu um, six months after graduation. And part of that is because we have a commitment to ensuring that our students are well experienced and also our students are in a good network that can really help them out. Um, the WIT Alumni Network has um, alums working all around the country in almost every state. Whenever we do fundraisers, we get donations from every state and from alums in many countries as well. 
We have very personalized one-on-one -on -one advising, not just with our faculty, which we have faculty advisors, but also our Compass Success Center. So we have a centralized success center in our library where you can go and just get help with anything. And then we're also very proud of Cable, which is our communications and business leadership program, which is a really unique um, opportunity to work with a Fortune 500 company for our communications and our business students as well. And on this slide, you see one of the great lit traditions, which is stomping the seal. So um, there's a big seal um, in the middle of campus and you're not allowed to step on it until you graduate from WIT. And so of course on commencement day, um, all the students go and stomp the seal. And so I'm gonna stop sharing, but I do wanna go over very quickly um, what are, oh, my apologies. I wanna go over very quickly um, with my face, if it will start, there I am. Um, very quickly, a little bit about our application process. So Wittenberg's application process is very straightforward. We are free, um, we're on Common App and on the Wittenberg app. And we're also test optional. So we definitely have a lot of, we've been test optional since 2007. We are not part of the COVID bandwagon. We know how to read applications without looking at your test scores. It does not hurt you to not include your test scores. Um, and so we wanna make sure that you know that going into it. If you ever have a question about that, just let us know. Um, we are here to help you. Um, we would try to have a very personalized approach to college admission. In terms of financial aid, like other private schools, Wittenberg has a big sticker price, but 100% percent of our students are offered financial aid right on their acceptance letter and that's based upon your grades and so we do offer 100 percent merit aid for anyone who applies for it um, and so we like to say that we are doing everything we can to be as affordable as possible um, i think one big takeaway from wittenberg is that what we are is a unique community we are what we call the wit bubble but we're also fully engaged in our community as well so um, i always say if you get the chance to come to springfield come visit us we are open for campus visits and experience all that wittenberg has to offer as well as Springfield, Ohio. Thank you guys. Awesome. Thank you so much for your presentation. Up next, we have Heidelberg University. Hi, I am Alex Sharapa. I am the Assistant Director of Admission at Heidelberg University. So I will be sharing my screen here to pull up our presentation. Okay, so just to get started, um, I wanna kind of talk about what we call a few fast facts of Heidelberg. So we are a part of the OAC. We're one of the smaller private schools, uh, but we definitely are on the smaller end of that. We have around 1,100 undergraduate students. Around 90% of them do live on campus. So you definitely get that feeling as if you are in a little bit of a larger school, just because everybody that you're going to class with, that you're on your team with, they're all going to be right there living on campus, eating on campus, and engaging on campus. Another benefit is definitely the smaller student to faculty ratio. Having 13 to 1 means that you're definitely building those one on one connections with those professors. I mean, in some of the areas they are having you over for dinner. Um, I know the media and communications professor pre COVID times was having spaghetti dinners at her house. And they do that because of the importance of getting to know their students, right? They want to know you because they want to know how they can help you. What internship are you looking for? What job opportunities are you looking for? Really, what is it that we can do for you for the time that you leave Heidelberg? And so when you talk about small class sizes and things like that, not just at Heidelberg, but specifically that is what you are looking for is definitely building those relationships so that you can get those professors to help you when it comes to that. One of the biggest things that these professors are going to do are encourage you to get involved in organizations and extracurriculars. So as you can see here, we have over 90% of those students are involved in extracurriculars on campus. That includes athletics, that includes just social clubs, Greek honoraries, anything, any type of specialty club. Um, we're definitely having students get involved. Reason being one of our highest growing fields is our pre-med program. Um, that 84% actually just bumped up to 88%. We do have a very active cadaver lab on campus at Heidelberg that a lot of the pre-med students are starting in as soon as the second semester of their freshman year. So a lot of hands-on opportunities on the campus itself. 
um, kind of going back to living on campus, the benefit for living on campus is because of all of the additional things that we offer, right? So by having all of these additional extracurriculars on campus, it's going to be beneficial for students to live there so they don't have to commute back and forth. Um, so some of the different residence halls that we offer for students are the traditional dorm lives, but we also have townhouses, apartment style living, anything like that. We just built brand new townhouses that the seniors are living in this year. So while we do encourage students to stay on campus, we're going to make it as luxurious for them as we can. And that kind of goes into the dining facility. We just recently switched over to Parkhurst Dining about two years ago. Um, in that transition, they created an entire new cafeteria for us, which you can see in those photos right there. They added the Heidelbean, which is an on-campus coffee shop, which was really, really beneficial for the students who just kind of want to pop in and get, you know, something small or a coffee on their way to class. We also offer the Berg Bistro 1850, which is an on-campus restaurant that students can use their meal plan at. We have a power bar, um, which is definitely an area where students can grab smoothies. And then last but not least, we do have a clean plate station that offers vegetarian, vegan, gluten-free, and allergen-free options. And that area does cover the major six allergens that students are related, or that students have related food-wise. So we definitely are covering all bases when it comes to dining and housing. Um, kind of going a little bit more elaborate on the student engagement. Again, smaller campus, but we're very, very proud of our music ensembles. We have a really strong theater department. We are a part of the OAC, so our athletics, um, we're very strong in 20 varsity athletic teams, the newest being men and women's lacrosse. We have Greek life on campus. Um, and again, just basic student government and special interest groups, but we do encourage students to get involved because it is that resume builder that is going to get you those job internships and those job opportunities. Also, some other things that you can add to that resume that we're worried about here is the on-campus student research. I don't think a lot of people assume that a small school like Heidelberg has a lot of research opportunities, but we do, specifically in the natural sciences. We're very strong in our study abroad pre-COVID. Um, our honors program is very strong and we do offer a four-year graduation guarantee for our students. Another big advantage for us is the plus one advantage. It's a tuition-free MBA for students, any major that meets the prerequisites. Um, those prerequisites being that you graduate within four years with a 3.0 GPA. It's a one-year program for any student. You just have to make sure that you have the business undergraduate classes. More information can be shared. Just ask in the comment section. Um, then kind of just showing our scholarships. Our academic scholarships range anywhere from 15 to $20,000 a year. And those can be provided to students all four years. So you receive that money every single year as long as you maintain a very reasonable GPA of a 3.0. Um, and that will take a lot of that sticker price away. I know we've touched on it previously in the other presentations, but when you're looking at smaller schools like this, sticker price is definitely going to be something that's alarming at first, but something that we feel very, very strongly about um, in showing you those financial aid packages. So to get a financial aid package, you just have to apply to Heidelberg. We are test optional, so either go on the Common app or our website. The application is completely free, and if you have any questions, just let us know in the comment section. Thank you. Thank you very much for that presentation. As just a final reminder, if you do have questions for any of the institutions during this session, please feel free to drop those into the Q&A. Our final college for this session is Mount St. Joseph. Awesome. Thank you, Clarissa. Thanks for everybody for hosting and coming. Um, my coworker Taylor is going to throw up our presentation here in a moment. Um, I am Matt Wright. I'm one of our admissions counselors, and I'm here alongside Taylor. Uh, talking about MSJ, um, we are super, super um, blessed to have be celebrating our centennial this past year. Corona kind of put a little bit of a damper on it, but we are celebrating nonetheless. And um, we were founded in 1920 by the Sisters of Charity, which is... Uh, a long-standing Catholic organization here in America, and their whole commitment is just to bringing out in students and bringing out in themselves their ability to impact their community around them. And that is something that is pervasive throughout all of the Mount's um, mission. We do that through every single one of our programs. We are a liberal arts university, um, and so you're going to get a really wide variety of um, 
opportunities throughout your degree here at the Mount. Uh, in all of our majors, um, there is opportunities to um, study abroad. There are opportunities to get out into uh, the local Cincinnati area. And we'll talk about all of this throughout today. Um, one of the things that I do want to highlight is obviously our 10 to 1 student faculty ratio. Um, as everybody's talked about, being at a small liberal arts university is really about that personalized education. And that's something that we're really committed to as well. Um, some really fun things about us. Uh, we do have a couple advanced degrees that students can um, have the opportunity to engage in. We are starting up a doctorate of education. We have a doctorate of physical therapy that students can um, go through their entire physical therapy track with us, as well as several master's degrees that students can get involved in. So um, I'm going to turn it over to Taylor to talk to you guys a little bit more about what uh, getting into your career and getting into your college looks like here at the Mount. Awesome. Like Matt said, my name is Taylor. I'm another admission counselor. Um, and looking at this page and this slide, uh, the most important thing that you're going to want to take away is our 99.6% career outcome rate. Um, so this is just a percentage of our students that once they graduate, they're getting a job or getting into a graduate program of choice within six months. Um, and really, that percentage reflects the education that you're getting here at the Mount. Um, another thing that is important is the opportunity to co-op, right? Get those real world experiences before you graduate. Um, and here at the Mount, every major has the opportunity to co-op. Um, so not only are the co-ops part-time so they can work around your schedule, but they're paid, which is another great um, opportunity. Um, and each, sorry, um, and each student is assigned a, a co-op coordinator. So this coordinator works with you specifically to find the perfect uh, co-op for you based on what your looking for if a um, you know big company down in Cincinnati or if you're wanting to look for a smaller company you know that co-op coordinator is going to help you find the perfect fit. Uh, another thing that's cool about the Mount is we are very involved in service learning. So service learning is basically just teaching um, and learning strategy that integrates community service with instruction and reflection. Basically essentially that is community service that is tied to a class. So our students if they work 30 hours within a semester um, they actually get a free credit. So that's really nice and helpful for our students um, and it goes towards graduation and that's a credit you're not paying for just for going out in the community. Awesome and I'm gonna talk about um, get some feedback from you Taylor. Um, I am gonna talk a little bit about Project Excel and what that is on our campus is it coincides with our learning center, which is a free tutoring service that is available to all students. Um, but Project Excel kind of dives a little bit deeper and it uh, focuses on service on servicing students that are coming into college with like a 504 or an IEP from high school. Our goal is to set those students up for success while they're here on the Mounts campus. Um, we absolutely want to make sure that we have done everything in our power to give them the best learning environment possible. And that goes for all students. And this is just our way of doing that for students that are coming in um, with those individual education plans. Uh, the other thing that I really want to talk about is the Center for IT Engagement. This is one of the coolest things that is starting up on the Mount. Um, we call it SITE for short. What it is, is the uh, opportunity for students of any major to actually end up double, double majoring in computer science. And this is something that we've really felt um, was important to get inside of our curriculum. Um, we specifically focus in on natural language processing, which is about um, collecting data, analyzing and synthesizing that in order for it to be useful. And what this is, is it's um, you do have the opportunity to be a computer science major at the Mount just naturally. Um, but what this program does is it says, hey, whatever field you're going into, whether that is medical, education, business, um, any field that we have on the Mount's campus, we want you to understand that ed technology is going to be a part of that. And you have the opportunity to major not only in the um, major that you are looking for to make a career out of, but also to be able to integrate technology into that in a very meaningful way, both at your time in the Mount and also as you get out into the real world. So the Center for IT Engagement is absolutely an awesome opportunity. Um, definitely check it out. Awesome. So we're going to talk a little bit about where we're located. So um, if you can see on the map, uh, we are located about 10 minutes outside of Cincinnati. Um, so what that means is, you know, not only are our students getting this personalized education that all these awesome schools have talked about in this session, um, but you're also getting the feel of a big city and not necessarily being within a big city. OK, um, so we're truly blessed to be so close to downtown. Um, some of the things that we do around campus are, you know, our students will, you know, host events on campus, but we're taking our students off campus. Um, we're super close. I mean, 
the major league teams like the Bengals, FC Cincinnati, Reds, super fun, great environment. Um, the zoo, Finley Market, all these great places that our students are able to be a part of and go experience. Yeah, and then uh, following up on that, guys, it's not just about the experiences that you're getting out in the city, but we also want you to gain experience. And so we are lucky to have five major health networks inside of Cincinnati. We also have the number three children's hospital in the nation. Um, like Taylor said, major sports franchises. We have six Fortune 500 companies that have their national headquarters located in Cincinnati that we get our students into for those co-op opportunities. Um, so just super excited about the benefits that being next to this city gives our students, not just from a fun atmosphere, but also from a work atmosphere and the experience you can get. Um, so closing out, we just wanna talk about how we are also a division three school. Um, so 50% of our students are athletes. So it's a really great communication system set up between not only our coaching staff, but our um, faculty members in general, just to make sure that you're going in and graduating with the major that you intended for. Um, we really hope you enjoyed this presentation. If you have any questions, shoot us a little uh, message in the chat box. Thank you guys. Thank you so much everyone for giving us more information about your respective institutions. I'd like to bring back everyone just for a quick little Q&A to give our participants a little bit more insight to your campuses. So the question I'm going to suggest is the, what is your favorite event or tradition on your campus? And we'll start with Florida Southern. Yeah, I will say my favorite event is the winter carnival we do at the end of the fall semester. It's called Winter Wonderland. Um, and we've, you know, got a bunch of different tables and raffles and that kind of thing. But because it's winter themed, we also bring in an ice machine and pump, you know, layers of snow on campus. And why I like it is because it's really funny to watch the different students react. The students who are from Florida are super excited and think it's so cool. The students from up north who are about to go home and have to start driving in the snow over winter break they're not as jazzed about the snow so that's always a fun little event. Ohio Dominican. I would say one of um, the most interesting um, days that we have on campus is the ODU day of service so the Teakwood neighborhood that is right next door to us um, our students will actually spend an entire Saturday and go around to the neighborhood homes and do gardening for them. They'll rake leaves. Sometimes it's still snowing, so they'll shovel snow. Um, but they, they really try to give back to the people who are the closest to campus, who we probably annoy with the late nights and, and everything. So they, they try to do what they can to give back um, to that immediate neighborhood. Otterbein? I would say definitely our students' favorite tradition would be our 1 a.m. donut run that we have. So we have the Schneider's Bakery and Donut that is located in Uptown, which again is just a walk away from our residence halls. And really students can do this any day of the week that they want to, but um, in, for new students in their first week on campus and then right before graduation, we kind of hold a bigger event for a 1 a.m. donut run. So it's really funny to see a huge line of our students take up our main state street at one in the morning, just waiting for donuts and coffee. Wittenberg? Yeah, um, one of the big traditions would be Whitfest, which is like our all day food, food trucks, um, and then music festival, we usually get a really cool um, artist to come. And so that's usually a really fun event on campus um, and kind of transforms that hollow of campus, the green space on campus into a big party. Gilbert? I would definitely say the hype day. It's a hype career readiness day that kind of focuses on the six soft skills like communication and some of the skills that they might say college students are lacking these days. Um, and it starts out with a keynote speech, which is really cool. And we usually bring in a pretty big name. So we've had Sean Johnson East, the Olympic gymnast. We've had um, Damon Johns, Terry Crews. Uh, most recently, we had Cal Penton yesterday, who was on Designated Survivor. So we get to meet some really cool people. So those are definitely my favorite days. And Mount St. Joseph. Um, so being an alumni from the Mount, uh, something that happened while I was a student here and that has continued to be a tradition in the most recent years is, um, if any of you know who Lauren Hill is, she is um, a basketball player who played at the Mount and, you know, had cancer and was playing basketball and honestly just a true inspiration to a lot of, you know, athletes and um, students and kids with cancer in general. And so we celebrate her around 
um, basketball season each year with a game. And that's turned into like a really cool um, uplifting thing here at the Mount. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for everyone for joining us. When you close this window, there will be a link to a very quick four question survey and we would appreciate any feedback you can give us. This is also just one of many sessions being hosted. So there's one more hour after this. So feel free to sign up. Registration is still open. And in about a week, you'll be able to find this session's recording as well as all the other recordings from today on the same site where you registered. Thank you everyone and have a great evening. Great evening.